Thank you, everyone. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce Ken Martindale, the president and COO of Rite Aid. Um, Ken is um, someone that really has retail in his DNA. He followed in his father's footsteps, Al Martindale, uh, who really built the regional grocery chain Smith's, uh, which is now part of the Kroger family of brands. And so you can imagine with that background that he started out in retail in his teens and managed his first store before he was 21. Uh, and if you ask Ken what, is the, uh, what makes a really strong retail brand, he will tell you it's a strong culture, a culture that is made of associates who are brand advocates and really deliver best-in-class service. And he knows this firsthand, being out in the stores talking to associates, um, not behind his desk, which he still does today. And you know it, the payoff of that is that he knows the associates well, and it, is, it continues to be building a culture, a very strong culture at Rite Aid, one of his top priorities. He has more than 30 years of leadership experience spanning Smith's and Fred Meyer's, which is also part of Kroger's, and then Pathmark. He also served as president, CEO, and chairman of Intisource, Inc., which uh, provided procurement services, a software company for drug and uh, retail and food uh, companies, as well as wholesale and manufacturing companies. And he did this before joining Rite Aid in 2008 and then being president in 2013. And Ken is no ch stranger to challenges because he was president of Pathmark during its turnaround and successfully recently has turned around Rite Aid and its 5,000 stores. Although t uh, Ken will tell you that the Rite Aid story is no longer uh, a turnaround story, but a story of business growth. Ken played a very strong role in that turnaround with his focus on brand reinvention um, and his commitment to the innovation and reimagination of the retail experience. The retail lessons that he's going to talk about today are only part of the reason why I've asked him to be here. Um, I can't think of anybody who embodies more the transformation theme of our conference, uh, which is you know, the, the idea effect. And I can't think of anyone else who embodies um, really the commitment to an agency client relationship in transforming a brand, um, not just as a business partner and a marketing partner, um, but really someone that really is encouraging, inviting of transformative uh, ideas. So it truly is a pleasure to introduce Ken and welcome to Thank you. Yes. Ken, everyone um, roots for the underdog. And Rite Aid is the number three drug chain behind CVS and Walgreens. And the competition in this category is very tough with the big box stores such as Walmart and, and Target and also the grocery chains and crouching on the pharmacy business. Um, it really means that you know, Rite Aid is outspent and outstored. And um, when you came to the company in 2008, there were some very significant financial problems you faced. And yet, you've been recognized uh, for successfully and significantly turning around a company um, during an unprecedented change in our nation's healthcare system. Um, so, tell us about your keys to success and what role your agency partner played in that. Well, you know, th thanks for having me. I guess five years ago when we uh, joined the company, uh, you're right, we had some fairly serious financial issues. Uh, sales were going down, profits were pretty dismal, uh, very little liquidity, and so, you know, first task was to do the, uh, 
the dirty deed of cutting a lot of expenses, driving costs out of the system, and trying to just keep the, the train on the track. But after we got past that, I guess there were three real keys that I would identify um, as helping us move the business forward and getting to the point where we are today. Um, the first was we knew we had to reposition the brand. It was a very tired brand, hadn't had a lot of capital invested in it in quite a long time. So we needed to reposition the brand, and obviously your team was uh, integral in, in that repositioning. I think secondly, we had to engage our associates. Um, you know, they were tired about, uh, of hearing that our company was going to go bankrupt. They were working for a company that wasn't going to be around in, you know, six months. And so we spent a lot of time trying to engage and energize our associates and help them understand where we were heading and, and the role that they could play with us. And then the last was to really drive a culture of creativity and innovation. Um, our company really had not grown that way. It wasn't in our DNA, and so we've spent a great deal of time over the last three or four years specifically driving creativity and, and pushing innovation uh, throughout the company. And what role did marketing effort play in this turnaround, and, and what role did uh, the agency play? Well, you know, marketing is clearly involved in everything that we do, and anytime you reposition a brand the way we did, marketing drives a lot of things that we do. I guess from the agency side, you know, there's a few things that I expect. Um, the first, I hold you guys very accountable for making sure that a customer, our customer, has a seat at the table in every discussion that we've got. And um, you know, we always need to keep the customer first and foremost in our mind. And it's, sometimes it's easy to stray from that mm -hmm. as we get uh, into the details of the business. Um, the second thing I look to the agency to do for us is to challenge us and push us, and sometimes it's not even uh, the most comfortable environment, but I think it's very critical because we can be a bit myopic in our, uh, our focus on the business sometimes. And then the third thing is once you've challenged us is to really push us outside of the box, especially in a turnaround situation where we know that doing the things that we were doing already uh, is not gonna get us where we need to go. And I think your team did a great job of, of helping push that and from that work um, evolved our really new brand positioning. Mm -hmm. And that brand positioning was identified and built upon what we saw happening with the consumers, um, a shift from health to wellness. And what we mean by that, I guess traditionally, if a customer went into a drugstore, you would expect that they went there to get well. And our new brand position now um, operates on the paradigm that they are there to stay well. And our role is really to help them along their journey for uh, a healthy lifestyle. Um, so our brand promise um, has evolved as a result of this work that we did early on on the repositioning. Um, I guess when you take a look at the brand promise of actively working with our customers to keep them well, that's really driven most of the initiatives that you've seen come out of our company in the last three or four years. Things like our Wellness Plus Loyalty Program, um, the 1,200 wellness stores that we've remodeled over the last three years, and the 1,700 wellness ambassadors, a brand new position that we created. We put these people on the floor to engage our customers when they come in and also push them out into the neighborhoods and the communities that they work in. So everything now is focused on an individual experience with those customers. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful. The loyalty uh, is a very big driver in this business category, and can you tell us a little more about how your Wellness Plus program works, and what have you done to grow it over the last, and evolve it over the last three years? Sure. Um, you know, first and foremost, we are a pharmacy, and 70% of our business uh, is done behind the, the pharmacy counter in that pharmacy department, so it's a prescription business. And I'm sure most of you uh, are well aware that anytime consumers are uh, polled, they will tell you that either the number one or number two most trusted professional is their pharmacist. And so we built our loyalty program around the pharmacy. Uh, first and foremost, that's what our business is and that's what drives our business. So um, we built a program that I'm very proud of. It is not a discount program. It is a true loyalty program. And it's somewhat similar to an airline program. There are multiple tiers within the loyalty program. And you get points in two ways. One, by buying products on the front end, you get a dollar for every point, or a point for every dollar that you spend. 
and two, in the pharmacy, you get 25 points for every prescription. Mm -hmm. So obviously, the quickest way to advance through the tiers in the program is to be a pharmacy customer. And those patients that are back in the pharmacy are our lifeblood, and that's where we make all of our money. So we're very focused with our Wellness Plus program on delivering against our best patients. And it truly does reward them. And so we have built a program now that when you reach the gold tier, which is our highest tier, uh, you will receive 20% off all the products on the front end for an entire year. A lot of people don't understand how we can do that, but the way we do it is we have pushed a great deal of our discounts and our promotions to our very best patients. And as a result, it's uh, reduced churn, and we've now got 25 million active customers that uh, come in our doors every single, uh, every single year, and we're very proud of that. I guess the latest um, numbers are showing that we're close to 80% of all of our front end transactions are now on the card and 70% of our pharmacy transactions. Uh, last uh, summer, we launched Wellness 65 Plus, which is a program that is clearly designed to drive more seniors into our stores because clearly they're the ones that uh, use the most prescriptions. Right. And uh, I'm happy to say that as we sit here today, we've got 1.6 million seniors enrolled in the program. They're actively involved. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Many may not understand um, that pharmacy is a very complicated retail uh, business. Um, how difficult is it to innovate in this highly regulated and complex business model? Uh, that's a great question. It is a very complex business. Um, you know, I've been in a number of industries, and this is by far the most complicated. Everything from uh, the providers, which are the docs and the hospitals that are writing the scripts, to the PBMs or pharmacy benefits managers that act as the processor for all of the insurance that covers the payment um, for all the scripts, to the payers or the insurance companies that are negotiating with employers and are actually paying the bills. And unfortunately, those three and the retail uh, pharmacies don't have our uh, financial mm -hmm. objectives in, in very good alignment. And so there are a lot of complexities and challenges in those relationships. On top of that, we've got uh, the evolution of the Affordable Care Act that everybody is well aware of, and it has tremendous impact on our business. You know, there's already several million people that have been pushed into uh, the medical system that were not and, and really have not had any experience with insurance in our country. And on top of that, there are reimbursement models for everybody that are changing dramatically. You know, one of the um, fundamental objectives of the Affordable Care Act is to drive cost out. One of the ways that that cost is coming out is through reimbursement rate changes. And so it very seriously impacts mm -hmm. the profitability of a lot of different pieces of our business. With all that said, we are very highly regulated, everything from you know, patient privacy to government contracts, because 40% of the prescriptions that we fill are ultimately paid for through either state or federal insurance. Mm -hmm. So it is very, very complicated. And I guess, you know, one of the things that is very important to me is that our agency partner understands those complexities and can operate side by side with us as we try and navigate these choppy waters. And I think your team has done, you know, a, a very nice job at that. Um, when you think about navigating those waters by having a partner next to us that doesn't need to slow the process down all the time because they're trying to understand the nuances of our business, it helps us innovate. And so I think, you know, we've been very aggressive at driving innovation um, with you and some of our other partners. And, you know, most of the innovations that you're seeing come out of the company are very personalized, mm -hmm. um, trying to build on individual experiences. And we've been pretty successful so far. I think in the future, we just need to focus on being able to develop and execute those innovations on, on an even faster basis. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to the explosion of digital communications and dig digital technology and how it's affected the approach your marketing approach to your custo uh, customers? Uh, yeah, you know, the change that is occurring in our channel right now is really, it's unprecedented. And if you look at a retail drugstore today, it's not really just about putting pills in a bottle anymore. Uh, it's much more of a service-based um, business now where we're giving immunizations, you know, we shot over three million immunizations this year. Five years ago, we shot zero. 
Mm -hmm. um, we're doing medication therapy management and comprehensive medical reviews. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, you know, we've just rolled out a brand new innovation where we have embedded healthcare coaches with practices. So they are actually integrating with the physician and trying to build individualized care plans for polychronic patients. So as this transition goes on, it is requiring brand new skill sets from our team and from our partners. And so I think as we look to the future and say, you know, what role does digital have to play? Um, it, it's going to be mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. um, the two things that probably have popped out of this new business model that we're looking at as, it, as it's evolving today from a digital perspective are A, data. Um, you know, we have two billion transactions now that have been recorded and tied to a Wellness Plus card. So we have a tremendous amount of information about our customers, more than we've ever had. We understand how they act, how they think, what they buy, what, what items they buy together. And so being able to harness the value of that data is going to be critical for us. And, and that's one of the big changes. And I think the other big change from a digital perspective for us is our ability to very quickly now measure the results of some of the new digital media that we're using and very quickly assess whether a program's working. And if it is, you know, put the gas down and, and push it harder and faster. And if it's not, stop immediately, change directions, and, and move in a, in a new direction. So, you know, things are changing very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Following up on that, how has the change in healthcare and pharmacy and digital technology impacted your internal organization? Well, we just, uh, I guess the easiest way to answer that is within the last six months, we've got two brand new uh, job titles in our company. Um, on the marketing side of the business, you know, we've got a director of uh, CRM and we've got a digital director that we brought on. And so they, you know, they will play integral roles as our strategy continues to develop. And so, you know, we're adding, especially in the marketing, you know, we're, we're certainly not in a situation where we're adding a lot of overhead to our company. But on the marketing side of the business, it's changing so quickly that uh, we are, you know, we're expanding the, the, the team. And we're also, again, like I said before, looking for brand new skill sets that we've never tapped into before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's great. As an underdog, um, if you use, forgive that phrase, um, you always have to be 10 steps in front of the competition. And competition, it's also innovative. What are some of the ways that you keep top of mind in the consumer's heart and minds? Well, I guess I would answer that with uh, we use our secret weapon um, as much and as often as we can, and that's our associates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we spend a lot of time with them, and we are working very hard on building a new culture at Rite Aid, much different than probably the one of, of years past. You know, we had 1,200 of our field leaders in Washington, D.C. a week and a half ago. And we bring them in once a year, and we talk about what's working, review the, the numbers from the last year, and then talk about strategies and, and initiatives going forward. And out of the two and a half days we were together, I would say that at least half of that time was focused in two areas. Um, one is building a very, very um, outstanding associate experience when they're working at Rite Aid, and subsequently developing an outstanding experience for our customers when they walk in the door. And we're big believers that without the associate experience, we're never going to be able to deliver against the customer experience. So first and foremost, that's really, that's where our efforts are right now to try and, and create mm -hmm. um, the kind of experience that we want our customers to have when they walk in the door. You know, you guys did a great job of helping us build last year uh, a brand book and a roadmap that we rolled out to all 90,000 associates and it talks about our vision and our mission and our core values, what our brand promise is, and it's been very effective in helping us reach out across the country to 90,000 people and help them understand, A, what it is we're trying to accomplish, but even more important, why we're trying to accomplish that. And I think that roadmap has been very effective in helping us mobilize the team against some of the initiatives that we've got. That's great. Okay, when you look at the coming five years, um, what does it hold for marketers such as Rite Aid, and, and what do you see as marketing challenges going forward? Um, I guess three big 
challenges probably come to mind for us at Rite Aid as far as marketing goes. Um, number one is how do we continue to innovate and become more creative and more effective at building personal relationships and individual solutions for the consumer. Um, everything is, everyone's trying to do that. Uh, we need to do it and we're very focused on it. So that would be number one. Number, challenge number one would be building personal relationships with our customers. Uh, number two, I already mentioned, I think it's getting our arms around the massive amounts of data that we have today. And we've got the data, now we really need to figure out how to use it and make sure that it, uh, it drives our business and improves business results. And the third is probably leveraging technology, both uh, inside the office and out in the store. You know, we've, we've got a couple solutions we recently rolled out. I mentioned the 1,700 wellness ambassadors that we put on the floor. We've armed them all with iPads, and they have a lot of information on vitamins and OTC products and so forth. Um, they can print coupons and have lots of information for the customers. We've also launched telehealth, so we have uh, you know, uh, computers back in our uh, waiting rooms in the pharmacy where we can actually get a doctor or a nurse on TV and can see a patient and diagnose them, prescribe whatever it is that they need on the spot, and the pharmacists can fill it and send them on their way. So how we leverage those kinds of technologies in the future I think are going to be critical to us. And as we start leveraging them, how do we communicate the benefits of these technologies to the consumer? Um, you know, the stores that we're building today are going to be very, very different in the future. You know, what we sell our customers is changing and how we sell them is changing. And I think, you know, it's going to take uh, a lot of traditional and non-traditional efforts by ourselves, by our agency and, and everybody else that we work with to be able to uh, continue down the road that we are right now and keep driving mm -hmm. success for us. Great. Ken, I, I really want to thank you for sharing your insights and for being a great partner one who continually challenges us and invites us and applauds us for bringing in big ideas and also for truly being so receptive to um, new ways to engage the consumer to meet their needs. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you.